Hello, welcome everyone to the ninth episode of Minecraft. We've updated to classic 0.0.15a. The changes that actually affect our world are very limited. First, the textures of the log, leaves, sand, and gravel have changed. The bug I showed last episode that allows us to x-ray through liquids has been fixed. And the animation for Steve's has been altered to flail around less. And that is it. That is every single change that affects our world. The reason there's so little changes is because the main addition of this version was multiplayer. 15A was the first version to add support for multiplayer and is known as 15A Multiplayer Test 1. As I mentioned in episode 1, we're going to be remaining in single player for this series. But we can create a server as long as we're the only player who joins, because then there's still just a single player. However, for 15A, this is not even an option. There's no publicly released server for 15A. The first publicly released server was in 16A, and the first publicly released server that is not missing is 16A underscore 02. And we're going to be going to 16A underscore 02 next because every version between now and 16A underscore 02 is missing. And who doesn't like some good bugs? So I'm going to show two bugs. And the first one has to do with saplings. So I notice if a sapling is in a shadow and it gets highlighted, it won't show up. So that one just died. But right now, there is a sapling. But when it's highlighted, it won't render. And it doesn't have to be the highlight of the actual sapling. It can be a highlight of another block going to be placed. You can see the sapling is there. It's just not rendering behind it. And you can even get it so it looks like you're placing a block on nothing. So there, if I get the sapling gun, there. <laughs> so just a strange bug. It only happens when it's under the shadow, not when it's in the light. And this second bug is very crazy. It involves quickly flashing lights, so if you have photosensitive epilepsy, please skip this next minute. These flashing colors are actually in Minecraft, and change rapidly as I move the mouse around. Some flashes are single color, while others are gradients between different colors. I've played this version for dozens of hours, and only had this occur once shortly after starting the game, so I'm not sure if it can be consistently replicated. And here is a recording of my entire screen to show this was actually happening in Minecraft as well, not edited at all. So we don't have too many changes to mess with, but next up in the episode I want to simulate Conway's Game of Life in Minecraft. If you've never heard of it, Conway's Game of Life is the most famous cellular automation game. I'm going to quickly describe its rules. Part of the beauty is that these rules can be explained so quickly but still allow for very complicated patterns. So the game takes place on a 2D grid. In game, we'll be using the stone wall we created in episode one to show moray patterns for the game. On the grid, each cell is going to either be alive, which we'll represent with a plank, or dead, like all the stone. The game is called a zero player game because it starts with an initial state and then iterates through all the steps without any further input. Every step, each cell looks at its eight neighbors, including diagonals. A live cell only survives if it has two or three neighbors. Zero or one neighbors means it dies of loneliness, and four to eight neighbors means it dies from overpopulation. Finally, if a dead cell has exactly three neighbors, a new cell is born into that location. That's it! Those are the only rules. To emulate this, I will be building each step by hand. I can use the respawn functionality we got last episode to rotate the camera to an exactly consistent angle, which is perfect for the stop motion. Let's see the game in action! Here's the game of life from the initial configuration, Minecraft. At this point, it has stabilized into basic components. 
there are three basic components. Let's go take a look at them. The first basic remnant is called the still life. These are patterns that do not change as the game iterates. We saw two types that resulted from the Minecraft pattern, the box and the beehive. Any of these patterns you can verify it is still by counting each box or each cell's neighbor and getting two or three. Also, any dead cells must not have three neighbors. That would cause a new cell to be born. These are the tub, ship, and boat. And this is the long cubed boat. These are these four are called vessels. And the corners on the two diagonal ends can be added or removed without destabilizing it. And as seen with this very, very long boat, any vessel can be extended infinitely by chaining two more blocks diagonally. Here's the pond, which is a type of lake. Lakes are still lifes that use these two cell segments and have an open interior. Above this, we have the super pond and the honeycomb. It is incredible how many names have been given to all these different patterns. Above here is the vase. With the vase, you can see there are two halves that aren't connected. But either half by itself is not stable, because the flat edge right there will cause new cells to be born by itself. When they're next to each other, the cells in the between neighbor greater than three cells, and so no new cells are formed. And right at this, we have the largest still life I have on here. This is the clover leaf interchange. It has four separate parts that depend on one another. The second basic remnant is called an oscillator. The oscillator we saw is called a blinker. It is the smallest oscillator and has a period of two. The period is how many generations it takes for the oscillator to cycle. In fact, you could call a still life a period one oscillator because they return to the same state every round. This is another basic oscillator with a period of two. It is called a beacon, and the central cells are continuously being born and then being killed from overpopulation. This is the cross. It has a period of three instead of two. This is the pentadecathlon. It has a much higher period at 15. It can be started from 10 cells in a row. Third and final basic remnant is called a spaceship. We didn't see any from our pattern, but this is by far the simplest, called the glider. Take note at what the glider currently looks like. If we advance four generations, you can see the pattern is the same but it has moved to a new location. It's like a moving oscillator. So spaceships will move across the board infinitely. These are two other spaceships. On the top is the lightweight spaceship and on the bottom is the copperhead. These spaceships both move orthogonally as opposed to the glider's 45 degree diagonal direction. There are tons of complicated contraptions in Gunway's game of life, including even computers. Many contraptions, such as guns and puffers, don't even fit the three basic remnants we learned about. I'd suggest reading the Life Wiki. It is very interesting, and they have lots of patterns to learn about. The link to that is in the description. But that is it for this video. Thank you for watching! It took a long time to make this video, so if you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Bye!